VRAM is a pretty contentious topic with a lot of people arguing you need 8GB in 2024. But how far does half of that get you? Well, to find out, I've tested the GTX 980, which is a 4GB graphics card, to see how viable 4GB of frame buffer is in 2024. And I feel like everyone's kind of forgot about this graphics card. Everyone thinks about the GTX 980 Ti and not the GTX 970, but the 980 is kind of left out in these equations. But that's a good thing though, because this will go for around like 40 pounds on the used market. And I think for that price, yeah, this GPU is quite a good deal despite its four gigabytes of VRAM. Yes, that slightly anemic frame buffer might raise some concerns, particularly with modern AAA games as they are quite VRAM hungry. But to find out how this four gigabyte graphics card does get on, I've tested it at 1080p in my Ryzen 5 7600 testing PC, which has 32 gigabytes of 6200 MHz CR32 DDR5 memory, a Western Digital SN770 2 terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD, and an MSI X670E Tomahawk. I've also used the latest NVIDIA driver at the time of testing. I'll be honest with you lot, I really cannot remember it. And I've left the 980 at its stock out of the box setting, so. Without any more talking, let's see how it gets on. Cyberpunk's always a really good way of hitting old graphics cards like the GTX 980 and yeah, that definitely stays true today because 47 FPS on average with a 1% low of 38 means, yeah, it's definitely a playable experience, but was I expecting more? Maybe, I'm not too sure. However, what I can say though is we didn't get 60 FPS today, so if that's what you're after, you're going to need a more powerful graphics card than a GTX 980. Things are looking better in Hogwarts Legacy because on the medium preset, the game still looks pretty decent and the performance, yeah, it's not too bad. 52 FPS on average with a 1% low of 41 frames per second is not the most ideal performance, but what I can say is it's definitely a good showing from this, well, 10 year old graphics card now. And next we've got Fortnite and I'll be lying if this wasn't a very surprising result because the performance API has pulled out an absolute belter today. Because on this API, the GTX 980 managed to get 400 plus frames per second on average. Yes, that's 400 plus. I'll be honest, at first I didn't really believe it, but I ran the numbers again, I ran the tests and it was all within like 5% of each other. So yeah, this is a valid score. The 1% low, however, is pretty, well, low compared to the average frame rate, but it's Fortnite, we're, we're expecting this. Unreal Engine 5 stutters all the time. But despite that, as far as I'm concerned, the GTX 980 has pulled out an absolute belter here. And credit where credit's due, the GTX 980 had a relatively decent time playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor. If you didn't know, I don't think this game is particularly optimised very well, and that's a pretty common consensus amongst us PC gamers. 49 FPS on average with a 1% low of 36 frames per second is pretty decent performance. One massive problem though, the 4 gigabytes of VRAM was running into issues today. There was a lot of muddy textures, a lot of pop-ins, which I suspect is down to just the 4 gigabytes of frame buffer. So that can be a bit of a problem, even with low textures on the low preset. Spider-Man Remastered is up next and there's, well, no issues in this game because on the medium preset, 60 frames per second on average will do very nicely. That 1% low at 41 doesn't look like the best, but the 1% lows kind of go out the window when you're web slinging in this game, and that's how I benchmark it. So usually in normal gameplay, you might see better 1% lows, so you might even be able to get more performance there. So this is basically a worst case scenario for this graphics card. What I thought was going to perform not that great turned out to be a really decent performer in The Witcher 3. Here, 85 FPS on average on the medium preset will do very nicely, along with that 74 FPS for the 1% low. Very nice performance here. Yes, the DirectX 11 API certainly helps out, and that's what I recommend on older graphics cards like this, as 
yeah, it does really help out. As DirectX 12 just seems to be really demanding on this game for some reason. I'm not too sure what's going on there. And because of that, just stick to DirectX 11. The graphics card's running fine and you might even be able to get away with the high preset. So yeah, there is that. God of War is up next and for a ported PS4 game, I expected the performance to be pretty decent and that it was today. 65 FPS on average with a 1% low, which is looking very smooth at 56. Leads me to believe that the GTX 980 is, well, a pretty decent graphics card in this game. Yes, it's on the original preset, which is what the PS4 was using, but you are rendering at a native 1080p, which I'm pretty sure the PS4 wasn't, and you're getting more than double the performance. So in my book, that's an absolute win. And then we move on to Counter-Strike 2 and the great performance continues here because 250 FPS with a 1% low after 150 which is not necessarily the best in the world but the game felt smooth enough. This leads me to believe as long as you've got a relatively decent processor Counter-Strike 2 is going to be running fine on a GTX 980 and the fact that this GPU still supports reflex low latency yeah, you're going to be having a relatively decent budget gaming experience here. So long as you're queuing with like decent people and your team's not that rubbish, but that's beyond the point of this video. I think all in all, if we lower our expectations a bit, the GTX 980 is still a relatively decent performer in 2024. Yes, some of the newer AAA games won't really be running that well. You can kiss goodbye to like 60 FPS high settings, because you're not going to get it on this graphics card. But what you can get though is a fairly playable experience, particularly for the £40 you're going to be spending on a graphics card like this. And in my book, it's kind of a half win, as games like Cyberpunk 2077, Jedi Survivor, and even Hogwarts Legacy did get above 40 FPS. So that's a slight win at least, despite Jedi Survivor having a few texture related problems. But if you want to play slightly older titles like Spider-Man Remastered, God of War and even The Witcher 3, the GTX 980 has no problems here. If you set them to like the medium or like the original preset, the 980's got no problems at Full HD. Yes, two of these games are like ports of PlayStation 4 games and The Witcher 3 did launch like how long ago was it now? Nine years ago, That that's quite a while. But it did get sort of like remastered, rehashed recently, which made it a lot harder to run. So I think, all in all, that the 980 Ti can play these games pretty well is a good testament to it, I suppose. And then continuing with this good performance is the eSports titles. Who would have thought eSports games would perform well on this GPU? And in the case of like Fortnite, Man, the performance was really good, getting more than 400 FPS on average. Absolutely insane. And then Counter-Strike and Rainbow Six Siege, they also ran very well too. Also, the GTX 980 supports NVIDIA's reflex low latency. So if you wanted as minimal input lag as possible in these competitive games, you can always turn that on as well, which is great to see that NVIDIA does tend to support their older graphics cards much longer than a certain Team Red competitor. Oh, and speaking of support, it doesn't look like Nvidia is going to drop game ready drivers for the GTX 900 series, at least this year, which to be honest, I'm very surprised. I've gone on record in like, the previous month saying, I'll be surprised if they don't drop it this year, but it's like September now and there's still no signs of it. So kudos to Nvidia for supporting like 10 year old hardware because it's still pretty valid. And in the case of 4GB graphics cards, I think for AAA gaming in 2024, it's definitely not enough, even if it had the horsepower to push past 60 FPS, because you're going to be limited to low textures, and even then in like the case of Jedi Survivor, you're going to be running into texture problems, even on the low preset. And textures is the one setting I always crank up to the max because I like my game looking sharp. But if you stick to my recommendation with eSports and all the titles, four gigabytes of VRAM really isn't a problem at all. In Fortnite, I think it barely touched two gigabytes of frame buffer usage. And in like all the games, four gigabytes is going to be totally fine. And for the 40 or so pounds I spent on the GTX 980, I'd be lying if I said I was disappointed with it because it's shown to me and to you today that it's, 
it's a pretty valid graphics card for super budget gaming machines, especially if you don't care for the power consumption because it used around 190 watts in my testing today, which in all fairness isn't really that bad. So if you absolutely need an 80 gigabyte graphics card, there's a video up there for you. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.